In today's show, we look ahead to Wednesday in the NBA. There are nine games on. We look at streaming options, what we're watching for, and how to approach the next four days after that. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We're here to look ahead to Wednesday, what we're watching for in the games, how we approach streaming. You can stream on a nine-game day. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> all right. Let's have a look. Magic and Sixers. No, no, no. Your Orlando Magic. Sorry. They just beat them yesterday. And now we've got a rematch against the Sixers uh, on Wednesday. The Sixers are eight and a half point favorites. It's going to be really hard, I'd, I'd expect. Although they did it to the Celtics this season for the Magic to back up and beat the Sixers two games in a row. Sixers eight and a half point favorites, but there are some significant injuries here that have uh, popped up in the injury report. Joel Embiid, that's no surprise. I think he's going to be questionable for so many of these games and he will not play. He will not play both of these next two games is my guess for Embiid. They play the Magic on Wednesday and the Spurs on Friday. There is almost zero chance that he plays both of those games. I don't know which one he sits, but there's no way he plays both. Surely not. Surely not. That would mean that we stream Montrez Harrell in that scenario. The more troubling one is Wendell Carter Jr. Now, in yesterday's breakdown of the show, I said that one of the Magic reporters said that it looked like Wendell's foot had flared up. And wouldn't you know it, there he is on the injury report, plantar fascia issue, which is a problem. So, so what do we do about that? You can have a crack at Mo Wagner. He was great yesterday. I would prefer Wagner over Bol because I think Wagner's a better player. And also, they're giving the minutes to Wagner over Bol. But if you wanted to take an insurance policy, Mo Wagner and Bol both become options here. Or even Mo Bamba, who played more minutes than Bol Bol yesterday. I'd still prefer Wagner because I think they would give him the start and the 29 to 30 minutes. And then Bamba might get 20 or Bol might get 20 coming off the bench behind them. So they'd become lesser options. But if Carter is out, that does open up some wild possibilities for three different guys to produce 12-team value. Only two of them will do it, I think. And I think it's Wagner's one of them. And the bold bumper one's a little bit up in the air. And that makes it tough to suggest what to do. But that is a huge issue if Carter is out. And it did appear that way yesterday. We want to watch John Isaac, as always. Is he going to play any more minutes ever? 10 minutes last game. Production's well down. You know my thoughts on it. He's only a hold if you're first. And even then, I don't think it's going to pay off. And then I also watch Cole Anthony because... Yeah, what do we do with the minutes here? 22, 23, 25, 28, 30. Oh, that's so good, Cole. Uh, 16. All right, like, how do you trust that? It was trending, pushing way up. It probably should still be on a 12-team roster as long as it's punting field goal percentage. And in points leagues, there's some more value there. But the ups and downs, he played fewer minutes than Jalen Suggs, fewer minutes than Gary Harris, obviously fewer minutes than Markel Fultz. It makes it really tough to rely upon Cole Anthony. So will we get any answers here? I'm not sure. On the Sixers side, it's nearly, nearly always going to be about the wave pool, D'Anthony Melton and Tangles Walker. Um, Tangles Walker, no. It's, his name's not Walker. Tangles Walker's the other guy. Don't worry. This is Tyrese Maxey. Tangles. Don't worry. About two people understand what I'm talking about. Let's just reverse all that. It's the wave pool, D'Anthony Melton, and it's Tyrese Tangles Maxey. There you go. That's better. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about. What do their minutes look like? Can Tyrese do anything that's not scoring? Can Melton play more than the 21 minutes he played last game? Because it seemed weird that Tucker got 28 and Melton got 21. That didn't make a lot of sense. We're still holding both Maxi and Melton, but what we want to see is how their minutes shake out and how their production looks and whether we get any change of mind in that decision of holding both. I don't think we will, but we want to watch it. Wizards-Pistons. 
in Detroit. The Wizards are six-point favorites. Bagley will be out. Corey Joseph will be out. We don't have an update yet on old mate Dan Gafford, who missed last game with an illness. Getting him back would be awesome because then we get to figure out a little bit more about their rotation while on the Pistons side. Um, it's it's Hamadou Diallo's probable while Bagley and Joseph are out. We're, what we want to watch on Washington is Denny Avdia. I've got no, um, no real concerns that Avdia will play 29 to 30 minutes a game. My worry is that coming off the bench does cap him. Someone said, Josh, you know, why is coming off the bench um, a problem in in fantasy? Like why, you know, theoretically, you're going up against worse players. The reason why you'd prefer someone to start versus coming off the bench is it probably just, it's, it's harder to play 34 to 35 minutes a night regularly coming off the bench. It's a lot easier to do that when you're starting to play that. It's probably like a two to three minute upside difference. And in general, your closing lineup and your starting lineup um, are... Yeah, the guys who get the higher minutes. And Avdia hasn't really been a part of that so far. He was great last game. Shot 83%. And it's not just because Rui is out. That has helped his minutes for sure. But he's also on a real hot streak with shooting. I think he's shooting 39% from three. And his steal rate is through the roof. And his um, field goal percentage is massively high, which is not something we always trust with Denny. Now, he is a 12-team league player for now. But the role... And someone also... Again, is, there's a lot of stuff to work out. Someone tweeted at me and said about... Well, Denny's minutes won't get impacted by Gafford because one's a wing and one's a center. It's not really as simple as that because if Gafford comes in and plays 25 minutes at center, then that's minutes that Christos Porzingis doesn't get at center, meaning Christos Porzingis plays them at the four. And the minutes that Porzingis plays at the four, that means that Avdia and Kuzma can't play at the four and Kuzma pushes down to the three. So someone misses out somewhere. And yes, there were 18 minutes of Taj Gibson last game and we can just eliminate all of those. But if Gafford plays seven more minutes, who do they come off? Probably Corey Kispert. Probably, but it might be one or two away from Avdia. And we just don't know how that works. And we saw Gafford get 32 minutes the last time he played. And I don't think he'll do that. But that's my, my major part. It's not that Gafford's going to cut Avdia's minutes. I still think Denny gets 30. It's that Denny is not a 22% usage player on 59% shooting. That's just not who we can rely on him to be. And that's really what's happened, which is not really anything to do with uh, Hachimura's absence, I don't think. That's a lot of talking about that. As for D-Line Wright, his role is relatively secure. Again, a lot of thoughts that Kendrick Nunn's taken his role. He hasn't. His last, the games that he hasn't started, 22, 24, 22, 24, 23 minutes. Nothing to do with none. It's the fact that he just hasn't got a steal in the last two games. And if he doesn't get steals, DeLon's not useful. But he had been getting them so consistently that he was a 12-team league player. On the Pistons, we want to watch Jalen Duran. What is Dwayne Casey going to do with his minutes? That's the frustrating thing. Duran's minutes had 31 against the Bucks. Then 27, 24, 28, because he has to force feed 20 minutes into Isaiah Stewart, who instead of being a starting power forward, is now a backup center. So 27 minutes for Duran limits his ceiling for sure. And we want to watch that. We also want to watch whatever the hell is going on with Alec Burks. Alec Burks. 30, 27, 30 minutes the last three games. Burks is a starter. He is a 12-team league option. Will he remain that? I highly doubt that. But he is for now a 12-team league option when you're looking for points and threes. And then the yeah, trickle-down effect of what that does for Killian Hayes also is something that we do need to pay attention to. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Lockdown because they're the number one sportsbook in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that can make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now and you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. If we go across to the FanDuel Sportsbook. We can look at the basic stuff for the Super Bowl. We can look at the fact that the Eagles are one and a half point favorites, but there's all there. There's their anytime touchdown scorer uh, odds, their Super Bowl MVP odds. Let's have a look. Who is favorite for MVP? Jalen Hurts, marginally ahead of Patrick Mahomes, and then it is a gigantic gap. Can anyone that's not a quarterback win it? AJ Brown, Travis Kelsey, Devontae Smith, Hassan Reddick's there. Wow. Don't think that's going to happen, but you never know. All those odds are available to check out over at FanDuel. The, the app is safe and secure and super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. The next game we look at is the Blazers. They're taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, the Grizzlies are five and a half point favorites at home. We know Steve Adams is out. We know Justice Winslow is out. The one we want to watch for is Des Bain, who's missed the last two with knee soreness. Hopefully, 
he is ready to go. And this is apparently the target game for Danny Green to return from ACL surgery. Again, insane that he is back, but that is the target game. Johnny Conchar also dealing with the concussion issue. I'm not even sure that Conchar remains in the rotation if Green plays, to be honest. And I think those guys will sort of switch in and out. This is the first of a back-to-back -back for Memphis, so Green's not going to play both of them. And to be honest, I'd be pretty surprised if Bain plays both of them. So keep an eye on your streaming options of Tyus Jones in particular um, with the absences potentially happening there. In Portland, we want to watch Drew Eubanks, who played 21 minutes last game. If you're looking for blocks, there's nary a better guy out there. Well, there might be, actually, because you might have Bowl or Bumba get more playing time or Mo Wagner get more playing time in Orlando if Carter's out. But Eubanks just gets you one or two every night. He's played 26, 22, 22 minutes the last three games. Nurkic's injury helps that for sure. But he's just like a constant 18 to 21 minute a night player. And that's good for blocks in 14 and 16 team leagues. And when you're desperate in 12s, he's there. And if Nurkic gets injured, then Eubanks becomes a must roster player. Now, that's you know, hard to justify holding him, waiting for that. But when you're looking for blocks, Eubanks is that guy. I also want to watch Josh Harks. I'm not really sure what to do with him. He was trending down with minutes, got injured, came back and played more minutes. So, okay, I don't know what to do with that either. 35 minutes last game for Hart. The playing time back up. Um, he probably is a soft hold, but in a shallow league, a 10-team league, I, I don't think you need to do that. I don't know what they do at the deadline. I'm really worried about where his value goes rest of season. For the Grizzlies, Brandon Clark, we just keep watching that. He did get into some foul trouble in some of his games, and that has reduced some of his playing time. Like last game, he played 18 minutes, but I'd expect him to push back up to high 20s, low 30s in minutes. And then we also watched Tyus Jones, who played 30 minutes last game with Bain out. But remember, the game before that with Bain out, he played 20 minutes. So it's no guarantee that Bain is out. If Bain is out, that Tyus pushes up. I think he will. And I do think that with this back-to-back, -back, we're going to get a big opportunity for Jones to at least put up some strong numbers for them. The Nets and the Celtics is the next game that we take a look at. The Celtics are eight-point favorites here. Durant is out. Marcus Smart is out for Boston. And we did get an update that Ben Simmons is out and Tony Warren is out again. And Yuta Watanabe is probably with back soreness. I worry with... Obviously, you worry with Simmons. But with Warren, he's dealing with something called a shin contusion. He is one of the slowest healers in the world, non-Jonathan Isaac division. He had like ankle soreness that kept him out for like four months. He had a non-concussion head injury, which kept him out for, I think, two and a half months when he was in Phoenix. Like injuries that... I don't know what they are. He missed like two years with a, with a foot fracture, which is like a 10 to 12 month injury. And like it gets swept under the rug because of the Isaac stuff. But he was out forever. So he is a notoriously slow heel at Tony Warren. We're not, he's not a 12-team league guy, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, that's a deeper league situation. For the Nets, Seth Curry stunk last game. Both him and Joe Harris were terrible. So it was Paddy Mills and Cam Thomas that stepped up. Now, Mills and Thomas get an opportunity in this game, but don't look to them to do what they did last game where they played 23 and 26 minutes. It's back to Curry, and he's the guy I look at. But I also want to watch Dayron Sharp because... It flew under the radar, I guess, the game before against the Knicks when he played 14 minutes with Simmons out to be back up center. And then in the game against the Lakers, Sharp played 21 minutes and put up some really big numbers behind Claxton. So if you're in a deeper league, I wouldn't bother with it in a 12, but in a deeper league, a 16-teamer, Sharp is a really strong streamer on Wednesday, I think. Rob Williams also questionable for the Celtics, by the way. He missed last game with an ankle problem. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but he's officially questionable. Uh, Marcus Smart will be out the rest this week, probably next week as well. What we do want to watch is Malcolm Brogdon, how his minutes compare to maximum Derek White. Brogdon is getting more playing time than White relatively consistently at the moment. He's shooting unbelievably. He is probably the guy I have over White. And then also Al Horford, whose minutes are fine. The production and the shooting um, has dropped off. And we know that he's not going to produce scoring for us. I still think he can be a 12-team league player. But in a points league, I, you you shouldn't be as married to that that statement. I don't think he's not that sort of a player. But let's see if he's able to do something more in this one. Warriors Wolves, the Warriors are two and a half point favorites here. Igadala is listed as out. Of course he is. Um, there's no other injuries on the Warriors, but there is, of course, in Minnesota. We got a slight update on Towns today saying he's progressing in the right direction and they expect him to return this this season. I mean, that's cool, but it doesn't really tell us too much. He's out. McLaughlin is out. And of course, Rudy Gobert and Torian Prince reappeared on the injury report. So Gobert's just going down the route of being listed questionable for every single game now. Will he sit a game? Maybe there's a back-to-back -back coming up next week that he sits. Um, but yeah, this just continues to be frustrating where he just gets listed questionable and they keep playing him through. I really worry that something serious happens with this injury if it is actually still a problem. I um, mean, I don't know why they're playing him through it. Anyway, for the Warriors, I do want to watch Andy Wiggins, who's been bad, but was pretty good last game. Can he turn that around? Can the shooting get back on track? Can we start to see some of the increased rebound numbers we saw for about two weeks to begin the season from Wiggins? And then also Dante DiVincenzo 
who this is a back-to-back -back for the Warriors, first game of a back-to-back, -back, so I'd expect them all to play and then sit against Denver, but they might not. And that would mean DiVincenzo is going to have a pretty strong role here, three games in four nights. He played 26 minutes last game and got by with steals. He hasn't played under 26 minutes in five consecutive games. In fact, I don't know how long it's been since he's been under 25 minutes. It's been like three or four weeks at least. And that gives some value. Now, if you don't want to rely upon three steals a game to get you there, but with the potential of... Um, the potential of uh, resting on Thursday with the with the three games in four nights. Dante is a re really strong short-term ad, I think. Especially when he can like pop off for 12-team value on a game-by-game -game basis as well. On the Wolves side of things, D'Angelo Russell is playing a shit ton of minutes. Like He's just getting so many minutes. Now, last game, it didn't work out because he shot 20%. But he is playing just massive, massive minutes. He played 40 minutes last game, 37, 37, 39, 42, the last five games. Like just gigantic numbers. Can he continue to play that much? Will he continue to play that much? Don't know. I also want to watch Goose. Anthony Edwards. Because he's doing everything. He's running at almost a first round value over the last couple of weeks. He's getting defensive stats. He's hitting his free throws. He's scoring. He's generating assists. He looks like an absolute fantasy stud at the moment. How much of that is Towns being out? I don't know. But one of the fears I had with Towns, and it's why I said I would fade him in the first round this season, is because I thought that Edwards would take over as the number one guy. And I feel like, I know Towns is out, but I feel like that's not changing when Towns comes back. But I want to see what Edwards can continue to do to generate assists, to generate defensive stats. Because that turns him into a first-round player. And I've been really impressed over the last, say, month to see that change in his game. It's been really great to see. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. We're all looking for delicious treats, but we don't want to load ourselves up with calories. Why would we want to do that? Fat, sugar, that's for the other fools. We want delicious, high-protein treats that are covered in 100% real chocolate. And you might ask, Josh, does that, does that even exist? How is that even possible? And I'll tell you, it does exist. It exists in the form of Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. Not only is it the best tasting, but there's so many different flavors that I can't even tell you which one of their delicious flavors is the best tasting protein bar ever. They're all the best tasting pr protein bar ever. You're all winners. And you can now get them instead of just at Built.com, which I've been telling you about for years. You can just stroll into a Walmart store, walk in like you're Vince McMahon on that, on that GIF, you know, Get down there, give me that belt bar, stack them under your arms, make sure you've done your workout that morning so you've already pumped the protein in so you can carry them all. Four bar boxes at Walmart in cookies and cream flavor, double chocolate flavor, and coconut puffs. Or you go to Sam's Club, get the bigger boxes, 13 bars, and get the churro flavor, and you can also get the brownie batter flavor. So go to built.com, go to Walmart, go to Sam's Club, and get yourself boxes of built bars. Obi just barking because the delivery of built bars are here. Built bar is built different. The Thunder and the Rockets, the uh, Thunder, are five-point favorites in this game. At the moment, we're expecting that Lugens Dort is out. Kevin Porter is out. Alexei Pokashevsky is out. Jeremiah Robinson Earl is out, but he's back in the G League. Jalen Williams, Bronco, he hurt his ankle at the very end of the game against the Warriors. They have not released an official injury report yet. Watch that. He might appear on it. And the other one to watch is in Houston, where Jalen Green is dealing with that calf contusion. He missed last game, and he is questionable here. And the delicate dancer, Alpren Shengun, missed last game, and is questionable here. The Rockets, one of many teams to have three games in four nights. And if Green or Shengun are out, especially if Shengun is out, then Tari Eason really, really fires up. If Green is out, then we're looking at Eason a little bit, but we're more looking at Eric Gordon and KJ Martin to really step up there. On the Thunder side of things, we do want to watch the Bronco, Jalen Williams, because I am worried a little bit about that ankle injury. Broncos country, let's ride. So he's been great. He's a must-roster player. He's still not rostered in enough spots, um, but let's see what he's able to do. And also watch Pig Williams, because Jalen Williams, the other Jalen Williams, the Arkansas Jalen Williams, the tall Jalen Williams, he's like pushing up against 12-team league value over the last week or so. And he started last game in the second half over Aaron Wiggins, who'd been starting in place of Dort. We know that they're going to rotate starting centers and Kenrich Williams started at center last game. So does Jalen Williams get a chance to start at center in this one? Maybe he plays 21 minutes. That's enough to at least look at in 14 team leagues. Because he's putting up some okay numbers. And then on the Rockets, KJ Martin is a 12 team league guy. You've got to have him for now. And then there is a massive chance here for Tari Eason. Because if Shingun is out, Eason is going to play good minutes and be a valuable option. Now, 
when they do get healthy and when Smith and Shengun both play, Eason struggles to get 20 minutes. But with three games in four nights, with the potential of Shengun missing one of those games, it really does give Eason that little short-term boost. Don't get it fooled. His minutes over the last couple of, of weeks or the last week where he's played good minutes has been because Smith's out, Smith's out, Smith's in foul trouble, Shengun's out. They're the only games that he's played good minutes. All right, it's a consistent pattern. And it's not because Martin's out or not because Porter's out or not because Gordon's out. It's because the power forward or center are out. But with three games in four nights, with the potential of Shengun missing, it's a great opportunity to get Eason. Hold him for the deadline, no problem. I don't think an Eric Gordon trade solves anything for him unless they completely change their philosophy on Tari, which they could. But we want to see what happens, yeah? Kings and Spurs. The Kings are seven and a half point favorites here. Vassell is out. Joshy Richardson was ruled in last game and then a late scratch. Second game in a row that happened. Happened to Kevin Love two days ago and then happened to Josh Richardson where they were ruled in and then ruled out um, a slight little rule out before the game. And then Romeo Langford, again, they listed him. Man, he's going to be out for a while. He's going to be out for a while. And they listed him out for one game and then questionable ever since. Of course, he hasn't played any of those games he's been listed questionable in because the Spurs are just, I don't know, lying. I don't know what the, I don't know what the problem is. On the Kings, I want to watch Keegan Murray. I want to watch his shooting in particular. He's shooting an unbelievable level from three-point range, and that is really boosting his numbers. And we've seen it, that if he does struggle with his shot, the minutes do push back. Because he can't bring assist steals or blocks, and he's not a high-usage player. Let's watch the shooting. It's been great all season. I worry that we're going to head into fantasy playoffs. He's going to have a massive cold streak and shoot 33% and be useless. That's my worry, considering he's been so good all season. But he's been great. Speaking of useless, Kevin Herter was useless last game. 20 minutes. His playing time is wild. 21 minutes, 32 minutes, 36 minutes, 20 minutes. That's unpredictable. Someone asked me today, what do you do with him in a points league? I don't think you need to hold him. He's not that good in a points league. He's too inconsistent and streaming that spot might actually be more value. Last game, they went with Malik Monk over him. They do have other options they can go to. Terrence Davis got some minutes last game. So let's see if Herder reestablishes himself. On the Spurs, I do want to watch Trey Jones because we highlighted him on the buy low, sell high. How his shooting numbers are just disgusting. They're so bad. He's at 11% from three or something. That is going to improve. Let's see if he's able to show that here and you know, reestablish himself as a top 100 player. And then Zach Collins, Yucca Perta. What does the minute split look like? Why are we doing the minute split? What the hell is the plan here? I don't think we get an answer to that, but let's watch Zach Collins, who is a 12-team league player. The Raptors and the Jazz. We know that Ananobi is out all week. We know that Michael Potter is out for weeks. Yeah, he's a player for the Jazz. So with Ananobi out, we are looking at the big sneeze, Precious Achua, who's a 12-team league player at the moment, who's putting up really strong efficiency numbers and huge minutes. And that's the key thing, huge minutes here for Achua, who will remain a 12-team league player until at least Ananobi's out. And then we just hold through the deadline. Fred Van Bleet, really shooting the ball well, highlighted on the buy low, sell high show earlier today. Does that continue or we do, do we get a drop off? How are his knees and back holding up? They're all big questions for Van Bleet. For the Jazz, Kelly Olenek returned last game, started but played 15 minutes. What do his minutes look like? Obviously, 15 minutes is not enough for Kelly Olenek. We need 28. Will he get there? Will he trend up? I expect that he will trend up. I don't think he gets to 28 in this one, but I expect he will trend up. I also watch Colin Sexton because if Colin doesn't get 29 minutes a night, it's very hard to look at him. A lot of people still roster him in 12-team leagues. I don't really get it. He's definitely not my favorite player, especially in a backup low usage role. And I guess people are holding and waiting for a trade. And even if he was a starter playing 30 minutes a night, if Conley was traded, him as the second usage banana, it doesn't get me that excited. It's okay, but he needs the ball all the time to do anything. And that worries me. So let's see what his role looks like in this game. Hawks, Suns. It's the last game of the day. No spread available because we don't know the status of Trey Young, who missed last game with an ankle injury. We do know the status of Devin Booker, and we're expecting that Cameron Payne and Landry Shamit are going to be out in this one as well. On the Hawks side of things, Bogdan Bogdanovich really stepped up last game with Trey out, but it feels like someone needs to be out, whether it's Hunter or Murray or Young. One of those guys needs to be out for Bogdan to be a 12-team must. At this point, we hold him, but it, that's what it appears like to me. And then I also want to watch Anyeka Okongwu and Clint Capella. The, the last three games, 28-20, 28-20, 29-19. That is not enough for Okongwu to be a must-roster 12-team league player, but it's enough to hold... Because he's giving you close to 12 team. Like he would be your worst player. And then we know Capella's calves and Achilles aren't particularly strong. So then you've got top 60 value sitting on your bench. So if you've got that stash ability, he's giving you just enough as your worst player. Probably hampers you in terms of streaming, which once you hit fantasy playoffs, you can't do. But if you are in a strong spot, holding a Congo is fine. But I don't expect any change to this minutes role, but it's something that we do want to pay attention to. Well, for the... Um, 
For the Suns, Cam Johnson stunk last game. Don't let that be any indication that you need to drop him. You hold him, and we see how it changes back here. And then Chris Paul, whose minutes are through the roof. Last three games, 38, 36, 35. We highlighted on the buy low, sell high show how he's shooting unbelievable numbers from three. He hasn't missed a free throw since he returned from his hip injury. Like, all of this stuff is probably going to fall away, and let's see what it looks like. But at the moment, he's on a real hot streak, Chris Paul. Top 10 player over the last two weeks. Let's see how he's able to maintain that. In terms of back-to-backs, Wednesday, Thursday, it's two teams. It's Warriors, Grizzlies. So Bain going to sit, probably. Warriors, Clay going to sit, probably. So DiVincenzo, Tyus Jones, really good numbers there on this um, back-to-back opportunity, at least with one game stepping up. In terms of streaming on Wednesday, yes, you can do it with nine games on. Um, DeLon Wright, that's really just for steals, but I like his role and I like that steals. Alec Burks is in there. Malik Beasley for points and threes. Royce O'Neal for across-the-board production. Isaiah Joe for some scoring with Lou Dort out. Um, Seth Curry, yes, he bombed last game, but I'd still be okay with him. DiVincenzo for steals and threes with some assists and the good schedule. And Tyus Jones, as I said as well, the good schedule and the potential that Bain is out. or The almost guarantee Bain is out at least one of the next two games. For deeper leagues, Tory Craig, Aaron Wiggins, Kenrich Williams, Xavier T. Ullman, Eric Gordon, Gary Harris, Jalen Suggs, and Jay Schwan Tate are all available in a lot of spots, but all have some value hitting into Wednesday's games. And for points leagues, these guys are available in 40% plus of leagues. Precious Achua. Like some of the names you'll see here, I didn't include on the category because I have a different cutoff. I use 50% for categories. I use um, 40% for points. Um, Achua, Kyle Anderson, Jalen Williams. These are all must roster point, uh, category league players and they're great streamers if they're available. Um, Alec Burks, Dylan Brooksy Brooks. I wouldn't touch him in a category league. In a points league, I would. Derek White with some value there. Malik Beasley and Cole Anthony, even though, again, the inconsistency can really rear its head at any point. If we transition from Wednesday to looking at the next four days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there are so many teams that have three games in four nights. You don't really see this that often. The Rockets, the Suns, the Blazers, the Wizards, the Pistons, the Warriors, and the Hawks. That is seven teams who play four, three games in four nights. So when you're looking to maximize your return on investment from a waiver ad, they are the teams that you attack. So there are four, five names on here which are great players to add irrespective of schedule. Kyle Anderson's got two in the next four nights. Jalen Williams, the Bronco, has got two. Jericho Sims has got two games in the next four nights. You just made the list. DeLon Wright's got three in four nights and Precious Achua's got two in the next four nights. All of those guys probably should be added. And then you get the boost of Alec Burks, three games in four nights. Dante DiVincenzo, three games in four nights. And Denny Avdia. Avdia's projections didn't come out to, in my projections as top 100 per game, which again, I, I think he's probably more the 110, 120 range and that's fine. But they've got three games in four nights. You can't leave him on the waiver wire, Denny. And he's still available in 40% plus of leagues. I think all of those guys, probably all these eight, that's why I'm putting them up there, should be on rosters for the schedule benefit with DiVincenzo, with Burks, with DeLon, or just their value in general with Avdia, with Anderson, with Williams, and even with Achua. So there's some really strong options out there for you to get some benefit in your fantasy team. And that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.